I'm going to start working my way through some of these questions uh, that was asked. The first one here I see from Michael, and I'm not sure. It, it's the question: Is it more ideal for biochar to come pre-inoculated or to come inert, then mixed with locate local on-site compost and inoculate with native bacteria? Basically, are native bacteria better in biochar than an off-the-shelf non-native bacteria in the biochar? And I don't think really any of us address that. And that certainly with my work, I, I'm not concerned so much with using biochar as kind of a delivery mechanism for bacteria to, let's say, the rhizosphere or within the soil. Uh, I think people have looked at that. I personally can't give you an, a good answer for that question. I don't know if Jeff or Dusty can address that in more detail. This is Jeff. Uh, that mechanism has been used by a few people here in the United States. Um, they're advertising it as inoculated biochar compost mix. Uh, I don't have the name of the person who's doing that, nor the company, but I have seen it out in the uh, commercial world. Now, whether it works, well, if they're selling it, I would imagine that it has been through some type of testing. So, you know, that's up to the buyer. All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, here's one from Jill. Are most systems, I think this was during your presentation, Jeff, are most systems optimized for a single type of feedstock, or is it common to mix feedstocks before entering the system? We talked about mixed biochar. I think the question might be getting at, do you mix it before going in the kiln, or do you mix it afterwards? Oh, good question. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. I've been asked that before. When we blend our biochars, we blend them before we pyrolysize them. But I would think there is no reason you couldn't do some type of post-production blending of the material. It's all up to the particular uh, commercial operator. Imagine just with something as simple as the dust that would be generated post-production, that it might be easier to do it pre-production. But Well, if you work with a pellet, you usually don't have that concern, but again, the dust is, is a health issue. Right. There are a couple questions on the temperature and particle size. The For the pine chip biochar I was using, someone asked, and it ranged on both the biochars I worked with, there was a wide range in particle sizes. But for instance, the high temperature biochar, pine chip biochar, went from about a quarter of a micron all the way up to 1.2 millimeters uh, with a weighted average of about 350 microns. A question here, and I think this is probably directed towards Dusty, is can biochar be used for site remediation efforts? And are you familiar with work that Utah State University is doing with biochar research? Um, uh, yeah, when, I mean, not yet. Yes, uh, I was working with Utah State. Um, uh, one of the uh, leading professors there, a soil scientist, and, and we collaborated with them. Uh, Utah State's also doing some biochar work in, uh, in nurseries, and uh, so far it's, it's proven uh, some really good results. Um, and so biochar could, then another question, biochar can have applications in urban forestry. Well, yeah, definitely. That slide I showed that uh, uh, going on in um, in uh, downtown Chicago and also the work done in uh, being currently being done in Nevada shows that uh, 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 street trees have a terrible environment with all the pollution, uh, uh, automobile exhaust, and of course then the, uh, the salt that goes into those um, uh, tree wells. And um, it, the, the, the preliminary results from both of those studies, both the one in Nevada and Chicago, show positive uh, responses of the trees to the addition of the biochar. All right, thank you. Um, I guess we probably need to finish up here. Uh, one question here, we'll, we'll finish up with this. So the key factors in biochar are the organic matter, soil quality improvement, and soil moisture retention. Um, so I guess I'll, Jeff and Dusty, let you comment first. Uh, as far as I think what they're asking is, are these the biggest impacts that 
biochar would have on a soil, and that is changing organic matter, this is overall soil quality improvement, and soil moisture retention. Uh, okay. That's the three easiest to explain now within only about one minute or 30 seconds, but those are probably your three biggest take-home points for the uh, agronomic and the horticultural industry. Okay. Uh, I'd like to also add the uh, CEC, um, or uh, cation exchange capacity uh, in, in some, and, 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 and carbon in some, in some cases, uh, the biochar improves the growth rate and the crop yield. And those are two important factors to farmers, how much you get per acre, and of course the, the, the quality of the crop uh, frequently affects the price. So there's probably eight or nine different but again, like like uh, uh, Carl said or or Jeff said, the uh, water retention and um, and infiltration reduction. In other words, holding the, holding onto the water longer and keeping it in the growth zone. Very important, especially in desert areas and and those sandy soil areas where water just goes right on through it. 